know the saying, you should never go to the grocery store when you're hungry. You should also never watch a cooking show when you're hungry and in DIY mode. Why not? Because you'll overspend on food and you'll create a cooking show. Hi, I'm Adrienne and I'm from the South, but I live in Harlem. I just invited four chef friends to come to New York to compete for the coveted title Southern Chef All-Stars. Imagine four chefs living in a two-bedroom apartment and they're strangers and they cook dinner for me and 25 guests. I even got judges and a prize. Meet Judge Didisi Olutosin. He's Nigerian and currently lives in D.C. He also created the menus for the chefs. All right, so here we are at day one of Southern Chef's All-Star Cooking Competition. We're doing a pop-up kitchen here in Harlem, and we've got four wonderful chef contestants who are going to be doing their thing for the next four nights. Hey, Chickadee, Chickadee, honey, I am Sasha Fox. What in the devil is this? Where is my chauffeur? I'm supposed to have a limo. They put me on a bus. Note to self, when dealing with divas, perhaps you should include more in your transportation budget. I am from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Roll Tide. And currently, I am a recording artist. Right now, that's what I'm doing, but next week, I might be doing something else, honey, because you know Southern girls have to be multitaskers, okay? But I'm going to stay focused. So anyway, honey, I specialize in uh, Southern fusion. And before I pass the baton, I just want everyone to know in the whole wide world, I am the Southern All-Star. My name is James Rose, and uh, I'm uh, from Alabama, and I'm currently a uh, chef in Alabama. So, where are you from? South Carolina. South Carolina. So you come in and you bring this in from South Carolina? Well, I bring it in from South Carolina, some from uh, Georgia, some from uh, North Carolina. Chef James, AKA Big Country. You can't get countryer than Big Country. I come to create my own little twist on the Southern cooking to let them know that you can have fun with cooking. And that's one of the things that I'm gonna bring to the table, also trying to be the Southern Chef All-Star. My name is Ryan Bailey, and I came to be the next Southern Chef All-Star. Chef Ryan, her roots are Native American, and she hails from Durham, North Carolina. Now she's a combination of Pocahontas and Daisy Duke. My specialty is everything sweet, tiramisu, cobblers, all that kind of stuff. And I'm currently a chef for a major league team. My name is Raymond Lewis, and I am the next Southern Chef All-Star. Chef Raymond, also known as the mayor of Harlem. I don't recall that election, but he seems to know everybody, and he can get things done. I have over 25 years experience in cooking Southern Caribbean food. I own my own business in event marketing and catering, and I specialize in designing menus for restaurants and events all over the world. And I will not be closing with the song. Thank you. Well, I am Chef Dadisi, and welcome to Southern Chefs All Stars. This is a week-long cooking competition in which all of you will be tasked to take Southern cuisine and soul food and elevate it to another level. The idea behind this is that you will not be cooking traditional soul food in the way that most people are familiar with it. You're actually gonna be making high-end restaurant quality food for a gathering of 25 people each night. You will choose a menu, you'll choose a number as to who goes first and who goes last, and you guys will be working together as a team to help each other out on each night. We've got quite the group here. Yeah. Uh, certainly this is gonna be a fun-filled week, <laughs> and um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and, and the wonderful thing is you guys get to share this house. You get to live together during this whole experience. Joy. Joy, happy, happy, joy, joy, right? <laughs> but Smile keep in mind, 
the importance of elevating the art. So tonight, you're gonna to actually be choosing from this bowl a number. That's gonna determine the order in which you go and who has what night. So tonight, you're gonna to select whoever gets the number one, they go tomorrow. Ooh. So that means your work may start tonight. Oh man, I hope it ain't me. <laughs> I wanna get mine over with, so. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this up a little bit. Okay. And we're going to let the ladies go first. I'm going to be a gentleman about this. Ladies, right? Just select it and hold it. <laughs> Just hold it. Sasha. Okay. All right. And last but not least. Who's day one? My grandmama always told me to be careful what you ask for. There it is. <laughs> day two. Day two. We're in day order. three. Wow. I'm day four. Well, there it is. Okay. Right. So, so now that we've determined which day you have, yeah. now the person, Chef Sasha, who yes. has day one, she gets to pick her menu today. And every night, each person in the order that the day that they pick, they will choose their menu. So, it's on you. Let's okay. see here. A little, little magical spin here. Okay, magical. And go ahead and pick your menu. All right. So you know what you got? I most certainly do. Tell okay, and I'll share with you guys since y'all acting so interested in everything. I will be uh, presenting for you tomorrow night, darlings. Seafood rice salad, devil egg trio with spiced bacon, pulled barbecue chicken and fried onion, Creole shrimp, sausage and cheese grits, pan seared salmon and turnip hash and red berry tiramisu. All right. Hey! Okay. All right. You're watching Southern Chefs. This is your support team here. Yes. Uh, as well as I am a part of that support team. So they're going to be helping you at some point when you guys discuss, you determine who you would like to have as your sous chef working in the kitchen with you. Okay. And then the other two people will be working as runners and servers of the dishes that you guys prepare. Chef Don DC has been a consultant for this competition and he did come up with some dishes like turnip hash, low country coleslaw, like really for real? You cooking hot wings and hamburgers, man. But I got to make turnip hash for real? Where do they do that at? Okay, now that we know who's cooking first, it's dinner time. We took the chefs to see Mississippi native, soul food purist, Chef Carlos of Boulevard Bistro. It's time to eat. Time to, eat. Time to eat. Okay, so this is the restaurant you guys, you was talking about that is, uh, everything is just what it is. It's not no fancy smancy stuff going on, it's just... I mean, it's straight Southern, Southern cuisine. I, I can appreciate that he doesn't compromise his art. Hello. Hello, hey, hello, Chef. Chef. How is everyone? Welcome doing, to Boulevard Chef? Bistro. All right. Wow, Here's a little you. bit of our, uh, buttermilk biscuits with a little Steen's cane syrup butter. Oh my right. goodness. To get your evening started. Right. right. Okay. Just right before we uh, sit down and dine. Yes. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, looking forward to it. Dine and wine. I look forward to serving you. All right. So just kind of to finish up our conversation about low country cuisine. Please do, right? When you think about low country, it's really a region. Okay. Right? So it's sort of like when you think about southern food and its origins. And when I say southern food, that's not to exclude Southwest versions of it or okay. Louisiana, but Southeast. Southeast. Right. So North Carolina down the coast. Sure. Uh, Florida, Charleston. Alabama, all, Mississippi. Going out west, right. Yes. And so that food took on a certain type of character. These like west, me. Right. Like you. Mm -hmm. 
So these West African slaves brought their ways of cooking root vegetables okay. and green leafy vegetables. Okay. And they incorporated that into the ingredients that they had available to them here. Uh -huh. That was the origins of this kind of Southern cuisine. And then of course, they were the ones cooking in this not only in the slave quarters, but in the master's house. So they were brought to <laughs> grow rice. That's what they're known for. That's why you find a lot of rice dishes mm -hmm. in low country cuisine. Yeah, okay. But then things like staples, shrimp and grits. The original shrimp and grits dish is actually a low country dish. Okay. Very different than what you might see in a lot of restaurants. And not to be okay. confused with New Orleans style Creole shrimp and grits, right. which has andouille sausage. Andouille yeah. is, a, is a New Orleans thing. Yeah, it it's is. not a low country thing. So there are differences there, but the, the nice thing about it is that this food developed and incorporated other characteristics. Mm -hmm. The Native American characteristics with the use of corn mm -hmm. and maize, um, German, there's actually German and Irish, okay. potatoes, that those type sausage. of things. So you'll find the German piece with the sausages, mm -hmm. that uh, souse meat, if you, you those who are familiar sauerkraut. with that. Sauerkraut. Right, sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. All of those things are a part of Southern cuisine now as well because you had this kind of fusion mm -hmm. Of different foods. So, this is food that's simple. And, like what we're eating here, you know, the thing about this particular meal, this is gonna be your last, what we call classical southern meal. Yeah. What you guys are gonna be preparing is gonna be an elevated form of southern cuisine with a number of different elements of techniques used to cook your food. We decided to take the chefs out into the heart of the city to help get them prepared for the week. I wonder why y'all move so quick in New York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get the train, baby. Hope it's the train. Ain't nothing moving this fast down the mountain. Ain't nothing moving this fast. This is what all the hustle and bustle are about, huh? At our first stop, we met our second judge, Chef Nadia S. Day of Nadia's Spice Kitchen. Not only is she known for her excellent culinary skills, she's also known for the art of pop-up dining. So I know we're going to take a trip to my favorite furniture store. It's called Our House in the Meatpacking District. And we're going to talk a bit about table dressing, which is the best way to theme it out. Are there any questions? Have any of you ever uh, created and executed a pop-up dining experience before? I actually have. Tell me a little bit about it. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, I actually had a small, very small space that was a closet. And literally? It was literally a walk-in closet. Okay. And you turn it into a dining experience. Added some lighting, some tablecloths, little furniture, and the closet went from a restaurant in 2.5. Amazing. Next, we're going to my favorite part of the city, Chelsea, and the Chelsea Market. This is where the chefs will get great ideas for their dinners for the week.
I'm excited to see what their interpretation of your vision I'm is. Very, I'm very excited, and specifically because Chef Sasha is doing tonight. She has a flamboyancy with her personality Absolutely. that I hope to see in the food. Chef Dadisi has chosen the Aurora salmon for you to prepare your dish with tonight. What would your temperature be for service? Medium, I think, would be the best temperature for this particular piece of salmon. Perfection. Yeah. That would be my choice as well. Alrighty, so we are at Bowery Kitchen. Okay. This is where we're going to purchase our pots and our pans. Life. This is starting to get expensive. This is where DIY projects go wrong. Desserts means that you need a whisk, correct? Right. All right. And actually, the chef has to listen. I'm just actually acting as her sous chef. She's giving me all the directions that I need to do to carry out her plan. Well, do her you have vision. your list handy? Yes, I do. It's in my back pocket. All right, chef. Let's take. Get it out and get to going. <laughs> All right, I'll on, we're we're on the schedule. Yeah. What uh, has Chef Sasha given you? I will be dinner? her a sous chef and assistant with the preparation of the dinner. Understood. And then from there, I will shift with Chef James, and I will use my event marketing skills to help to set up yeah. the dining room. Wonderful. So I'm going to talk to you at our next stop, which is our house. Our house is one of my favorite furniture stores. We came here because Nadia can get us the hookup. Hi, Hello, welcome. Hi, Joey. Thank you. Hello. Hello, how are you guys? Hey, how you doing? How are you? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, how are you guys today? How you well, doing? Hi. Welcome to Our House Furniture. We're a family-owned company out of Ohio. We're glad that you guys are here. Please make yourself at home and let me know if we can help you in any way. As you can see, the backdrop is, is very theatrical, yes, so is. you have a lot to choose from here. The concept of pop-up dining is as much about visuals as it is about taste. One of our last stops before Sasha heads back to the house to prepare her meal is at Make My Cake. This is where Sasha will get all the tips to make her dessert. I'm doing a rib beer with Tio Rissou. So is there a specific type of technique that you use specifically for a red velvet cake? In the German soup, um, there's um, the cheese that you're going to use instead of the cream cheese. So right. Need that. And, um, and then um, what the cream is. German soup happens to be one of my favorite desserts, but I don't know what the I know this is the court. I'm using a raspberry liquor. Like raspberry liquor. Yes. With some dark, uh, dark, chocolate shavings the top. So once um, you have all your ingredients together, I think, um, like I said, the cream method, and then put it, adding that the, the, the gourd comes in after. Yes. And um, the chocolate shavings, I think you've got a recipe for this. Oh, that sounds great. I don't think, you know, um, if uh, you're going to compare different recipes, so you're not going to know which one that, that you know, which ingredients are going to match up good together. But um, I want to be involved in that. If, if I can come. You already <laughs> are. You are an inspiration. Um, you know, Definitely. I would love, love to be a part of that. And While Chef Sasha and Chef Raymond are out shopping, Chef Ryan and Chef James are prepping for tonight's meal. Oh my god. Day one, day one, day one, day one, day one. I'm tired of day one. Today is Foxy's day to cook. She has us making a tiramisu with no lady fingers. What kind of tiramisu is that? That's not even a tiramisu. That's a guy red velvet cake with cream. See, we add a little salt to the water. Bring out the taste of grits. How many of these double eggs we gotta have? A hundred. A hundred. A hundred. So when you get through making that batch, you gotta make another. I know you're not doing a damn good job. Emma 
potatoes. All right. Chef, what flavors do you want in here? Creole, garlic. Okay. Everything, anything that's Creole. Okay. Jamaican, I got I can't some. jump in that damn pot. <laughs> okay. Well, I sure hope y'all can, um, I hope y'all can smell it. And I know it looks good. Chef Dadisi came in and he said he was not, um, he was not happy about where we was on plating. He was not happy on that we didn't have appetizer, uh, appetizer ready. He was not happy on nothing that was going on in the kitchen. Too much salt. And you gotta need some salt in the bag. No, well, you know what? It needs to be mixed up because there's salt on the top. She just sprinkled a whole bunch oh, of salt. Oh, I went the to the bottom and got back. Mix it. Stir it up. Hey, guys, then. Stir it up. Okay. okay. All right, Chef. I got, I got you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. All right. All right? Yeah. Stir it up. Here. I think she sprinkled salt on the top, but it's not in the throughout it. You're watching Southern Chef. Bon appetit. Let's eat, y'all. Okay, so I was the first chef to cook for the Southern Chef All-Stars. And after this, I will say that nobody has any excuses. Seafood rice salad, rice saffron, it's got orange cut. Cone, shrimp, those tomatoes. Green onions gonna go on the top, and I have crab meat in the refrigerator that's already ready. I was basically, I helped to organize the dining room, and uh, I helped as an assistant in helping to prepare her dishes, and um, I was a server. And it was very interesting because it was very frustrating because I found her to be very disorganized. I actually cooked the meal. Um, had the meal, my chef left, she went out for two and a half hours, then she went and got her hair done right before plating. I went upstairs for 30 minutes to hair and wardrobe. I didn't get a chance to um, change my clothes. All I could do is get hair and makeup because I was the executive chef. One hour before we supposed to open up for business with the guest with the pop-up dinner, she goes and gets her makeup done. And she doesn't come back to 7.45 and then says she doesn't like to put things are being plated. Who knew? I've been down here all this time doing this plate and you ain't even tell nobody how you wanted this stuff plated. Now you want to come down here. Look, they all supposed to look uniform. They all supposed to look the same. They all don't look the same. Okay, well, uh-uh. Hold on. Hold on, Brenda Spears. Hold on, Brenda Spears, honey. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Country bumpkin. This is not all. Hey, That's hey, not hey, it. Hey, 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 hey. Something about New York women, Southern bells, it rubs them the wrong way. And I kid you not, every time they always come out of their mouth with country bumpkin. And I, is that the best you got? I just want to know what's more important getting your hair done or making sure that your guests are served. Your guest should never know what's going on in the back of the kitchen. Shouldn't even know about the hiccups you have. But they always expect hot food hot, cold food cold. Actually, I'm from Alabama, mm -hmm. Tuscaloosa, oh, okay. roll tide. And really, it's not hello, everybody, for me. It's hey, y'all, welcome. Let's get it up. At every Southern dinner, there's always a good reverend who shows up with a good prayer. One of the great traditions in the African American community when we enjoy soul food, faith, family, fellowship, and food. Let us pray and celebrate. There are two times we work while we're cooking and when we are about to partake. Most gracious and eternal Father, we thank you for this food that we're about to receive. We thank you for the hands that have prepared. We ask simply, let it go to our health and not our will. Amen. Amen. Watching 
Southern chefs. Bon appetit. Let's eat, y'all. Since this is a competition, I guess we should hear what the judges have to say about Sasha Fox's dinner. Hey! It started very high. The devil eggs were very popular, and actually they were done Excellent. very well. The seafood salad. Um, it caught a lot of people off you know, by surprise when I kind of heard some of the feedback from people eating it, but everyone seemed to enjoy it. The salmon, which we discussed during being at Lobster House earlier at Chelsea Market, was overcooked. So we discussed the temp being medium. The temp was well passed, well done. The turnip hash was done differently than I would have expected it. I was looking for uh, a hash that was done with cubes as opposed to uh, with kind of this uh, julienne texture uh, look and feel. But again, I'm looking for in this competition that the chefs take the menus and elevate the dishes. The, the red velvet tiramisu most certainly was not a tiramisu. It was red velvet cake with whipped cream, period. The judges have spoken. Now what about the foodies? Wow, the seafood rice salad, extraordinary. Who does that? Who creates something like that and come out with a nice little shrimp for you to eat that was succulent, that had so much flavor that I wanted more. Cheese grits, ich hatte keine Ahnung, was es ist, aber um... Es war super toll, besonders mit dem Käse drin und dann wieder diese leichte Schärfe, die sich durchs ganze Menü gezogen hat, war einfach super und es war ein toller Abend einfach. We um, didn't know what uh, grits are, so we never saw something like this before. The, that was re like really amazing. I thought the turn up hash was something different that I never experienced before, so that was something I'm probably going to try on my own. Das Dessert war wirklich toll, wie im Red Velvet Tiramisu. Ich dachte, okay, was ist das? Aber es war wirklich wie Samt, das Tiramisu. Wirklich super lecker. Um, we were really surprised as for like the whole food about the tiramisu because we just know, know like the Italian normal tiramisu and especially Mania, she loves it. <laughs> she was really, um, she's really crazy about it. So um, yeah, we really like the soft taste of the tiramisu. We had a good time and I thought this was the best meal that I had in a while. Hand seared catfish with braised collards. Crispy pork belly ramen in pot liquor soup. Sweet potato tartan with cinnamon anglaise. Or a honey crisp apple with sweet potato mash. Okay, I'll work it out. Uh, I was day two, and when I selected my menu that uh, was designed by Chef Ladisi, it was a crazy menu. I mean, he combined, uh, he had a duck confit, and then he wanted uh, us to create a side with some sort of stuffing. He had a collard green, you know, uh, a shredded collard green with a pan seared catfish, but he wanted me to use the pot liquor to make a ramen noodles. But I, when I think of ramen noodles, I think of like that little cheap pack for 99 cents with all the MSG. So I'm like, why would I want to make a ramen noodle dish? That's not down south. I ate that when I was 16 years old. I know I'm gonna have you a lot of doing my vegetables and helping with some of my baking stuff and helping with our plate, our presentation, our plating. You know, my meats and fish, is, uh, my meats and fish, I always handle. Right now, actually, I'm pretty confident these guys are doing a, you know, they're doing a lot better than where things were yesterday. So I think some of the nervousness is out of the way. Um, Got the plan together, the execution is going on. We got a lot of frolicking going on in the kitchen, which is good, keep the energy high. But right now, I'm pretty confident that we're going to have an excellent meal tonight, and I'm really excited and looking forward to seeing what uh, Chef Raymond brings to everybody. Two of them, three of them are cut in four. So now, I need you to put this. In the kitchen. No, I need that. Just sit right here. Sit right there. Sure. Yeah. Work. 
Turn it, it right there, sir. It said it right there. And then going on, I'm about to, I'm about to have Chef Raymond sit here and show me how to flay his first dish. And from there, he's going to go there and change his clothes. Of all, I cook 26 Cornish hens. I've been cooking Cornish hens all my life. The one Cornish hen that's not done, the judge gets from him. And she looked at me and said, Raymond, how did I get this Cornish hen like this? It wasn't raw, but it was like, you know, there was a little red in the bone, but that was an error. And it taught me the second night, the first thing about learning the competition, I let my dish go to a judge that I didn't prepare myself. Now I know why the president hired Secret Service. You're watching Southern Chefs. Let's see what the judges have to say about Chef Raymond's dinner. Okay, so I, I would like to preface this by saying that I was rooting for Chef Raymond. Uh, upon walking into the room, I was quite impressed. It was colorful and floral, and it reminded me of his personality, warm. Um, the setup was quite unique to what it was last night, so I was impressed with his delivery of the ambiance and the aesthetic. Now for the first course. We had the Cornish hen and jasmine rice. The Cornish hen was flavorless, to say the least. The, the pan-seared catfish, I was looking forward to that as well. Uh, we had the same problem with the fish that we had last night. It was overcooked. Yes. And in this particular case, it wasn't even pan-seared. It was southern fried and fried way too hard. We heard what the judges said. Now what did the guests say? Enjoyed the first course immensely. It was fabulous. I mean, absolutely outstanding. The pan-seared catfish was amazing. If I had to say what I liked the least, it had to be maybe the collards because they were just a little chewy. Here we go. Ah. Creole four bean salad, corn jalapeno fritters with a smoked paprika aioli, tamarind lamb chops with braised Swiss chard, kung feet fried chicken with a sweet potato puree and a banana pudding brulee. All right, well, sounds like you got a great menu. Get your team together, you got some shopping to do and a lot of prep work, and yeah. good luck. Thank you, Chef. You're quite welcome, Chef. I know you saw this grease in there. Did you think it was fat? And I know it was white. Was it in a bowl? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought it was oil. How you thought it was oil, yeah. Chef? What oil did we use, Chef? It was 5 o'clock in the morning. Chef, what oil I'm did you cook? I'm washing dishes. I'm trying to figure out why y'all got oil sitting on the top shelf so I can walk through the And you should have did a thought process. That's what I did. Started. I thought I would clean the dishes and get the kitchen ready for today. Mm. And you knew I wanted that damn duck. Man. I didn't know what it was. I had to do a confit fried chicken, but somebody threw the duck out. Fat. I was going to use vegetable oil. That's just regular ass fried chicken. The first appetizer. Okay. Oh, you serving that? You're not serving it yet, though, right? The drink is the first appetizer. Oh. They're too worried. They're too busy worried about the drink smoking and then they think that we ain't starting dinner on time. No, dinner doesn't start until three. Oh. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I am sweating. Oh my God, seven o'clock. No. Oh my God, no, no, crazy, crazy. crazy. Ryan Bailey with that princess punch. What did the judges think? So it is night three of Southern Chef's dinner competition with Chef Ryan. I was pleasantly surprised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so <laughs> 
We all know how I felt about my night one and night two. Night three, we started off with the princess punch. Dry ice, I walked into this room with the rose petals all around and I was like, yes. Chef Ryan brought her A game, was really focused on giving a great dining experience and absent of a few hiccups here and there, that was pretty much the feedback I heard um, from every table. And you could see it by the number of empty plates going back to the kitchen. We heard what the judges said. Now what did the guests say? Well, the princess punch really put the punch in punch. The Creole four bean salad was delicious. And it was just the right amount of spicy with, uh, it had kind of like a, a chili and a smoky flavor to mm -hmm. it. And what was so great is that although it was spicy, it was balanced really nicely with the watercress. Mm -hmm. And so it was just really delicious. Excellent. Was, we were trying to figure out what the base was because mm -hmm. it was so good. Next we had the corn jalapeno fritter. How was that? We loved it. Actually, uh, it would have been great if we had the opportunity to have more. Yeah. <laughs> and we think there was a little bit of crab in there. I actually did not like the fried chicken. Mm. I didn't think it had enough flavor to it. It tasted actually kind of bland to me, but I was very happy with the sweet potato puree. All right, Chef James. Tomorrow's your big day. Tomorrow you're the executive chef. It's your menu, it's your kitchen, it's your staff. You run things the way you want to run them. So tonight, you get to choose your menu. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee, yes. Yeah. So we're gonna go in this bowl, the magical bowl. So stir up a few things, and let you go ahead and pick your menu for tomorrow. Okay. All right, chef, here you go. I got a wedge salad with warm blue cheese sauce with crispy bacon. Wow, that sounds exciting, man. A lot of things I can do with that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I got black eyed pea hummus. Man, I can change the black eyed peas to hummus. That sounds very interesting. I got uh, buttermilk cornbread, Madeline. 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 And then I got pork shoulder with low country slaw. Mmm, don't that sound good? Sounds good. I look forward to seeing what you do with that. Yeah, I bet you will. And I got a citrus chicken cutlet with a spicy tomato con case. Yes. Mmm, that tomato show gonna look good on that plate. How about this fried apple I got tart with plum sorbet? Man, I'm looking forward to that. That's something to try to do something with that palate tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So even we're looking forward to what you're gonna do. Even the end of the day with a nice cold sorbet. Can't get better than that. Can't get better than that. We made it through day three without any drama. Well, at least that's what I thought. I'm just saying, don't tell me, tell her, because I'm coming out of here. She's sitting down, I'm sitting down. But I can do this whole shit myself. Do, okay. do myself. Do, hey, hold on. I'm finna ask this question. Oh, stop, please, stop, stop. Do my chef turn starts now since it's my day to cook? It, I'm, I'm asking the question. It's after midnight. It's after midnight. Do it start now? Because it'll be unfair because you you never had it starting now. And now I'm going to tell you when to get up and when to lay down and what you're trying to do. It'll never happen. If you have a 5 o'clock in the morning, I'll check in again. All week, I haven't asked you to listen. Put the sh in listen. order and I will deal with it. For all week. Watch When this. have you chopped for me? Okay, so what have I chopped for you? Everything. You're okay, really so good. what in the hell are we talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> I just want to know the Good night, bye. I'll see you in the morning at 5 o'clock. Sweetheart, stop working so hard. Yeah, I'll see what I got. I'm just going to sip my tea. This is a competition. I'm giving you 150% in a time out. Look at this kitchen. Did you walk in your kitchen Who looking like this? I, I, I want you to listen to words come out your mouth. It's 100%, right? That do not look like 100%. Now, y'all ready to go shopping? Let's go. Right, let's go. You're watching Southern Chefs. One thing I love about Harlem is sitting out on the stoop and being able to talk, have dialogue. And this is the last day of our contestant cooking. We got Chef James. Um, he has been organized actually since the first day of the competition and he didn't even have his menu. He was just ready. So, saw him this morning, ready. 
Saw him a few minutes ago, ready. And the thing about him, he runs an extremely large kitchen, so he understands time management, he understands organization, which was very impressive. So the thing I'm looking for from Chef James tonight is some extremely flavorful and delicious food. He said that's what he's bringing. He said he's going to take this competition, and we're looking forward to seeing if, that, if that's going to actually happen. Hey, everybody. Hey. How y'all doing? Good. Y'all ready for y'all table to be telling the line? Yes, yeah. sir. I wonder if the judges taste buds were tantalized. Honestly, Chef James had no fails, but the meatball trio for me, the beef was extremely flavorful. The turkey, eh, the pork, even more so. And okay, so wow, it's been it's been a, it's been an interesting four days, four nights of dinner service. Uh, certainly, the services have elevated from night to night to night. Tonight we had uh, Chef James Rose, and all I can say is that he fired correctly on all cylinders. The Black IP hummus hit home for me. I am a huge hummus fan, so I was rooting for it, and he, he did. He brought it home. We heard from the judges, and now from the foodies. The food was delicious. It was flavorful. It was spicy. It was... It, I felt like I was getting so many different parts of the South infused with different parts of international cuisine. The grilled romaine with grilled watermelon salad was delicious. The black eyed peas hummus was very flavorful. I'd never had black eyed peas before, so <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't take my black card. <laughs> The whole idea of having black eyed peas in a hummus, and I do like hummus, but I loved what he did with the black eyed peas. I like that better than hummus. And the cornmeal that was mixed in for pita, that was great. I loved it. The winner of the competition not only gets the coveted title of Southern Chef All-Star, he or she also gets the opportunity to be mentored by Michael Van New York City restaurateur, who's responsible for restaurants like the Shark Bar, Mecca, and New York City's Soul Cafe. And the next Southern Chef All-Star is... Chef James. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you Chef. Appreciate it. You're quite welcome. Congratulations again. Bon appetit. Let's eat, y'all.